What's up, then, people? Shay here, Oliver Bounce. Hope you guys are well. Been a while since I've said that intro to the video. Uh, I think this one will go up on YouTube, to be honest. But anyway, um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the the axis, the uh, the trio of uh, Rob Key, Ben Stokes, and newly appointed England Test head coach Brenny Mac, Brendan McCollum, New Zealand stalwart. Uh, where do we start? So, I've been back and forth thinking, is actually this is a good appointment? Is this a good choice for England to go down this, uh, you know, this route of a, uh, electing uh, a guy who was predominantly known for his performances as coach and player, captain, well, or player and um, uh, a player and a, and a coach in the white ball game. So, I really thought about it. Initially, I was like, "Nah, this is not good. This is, not, this is a poor appointment, actually." And then I got thinking, and I thought, "Actually, it's more for me that the the whole thing's greater than some of its parts." I think as as a trio, the three of them could be exceptional together. Now, listen, it's not all about Stokes and who he gel with. I don't believe for a second. Um, it's Rob Key's also got saying as well. I'm sure he'd want someone that he uh, wants to work alongside because his head's on the line ultimately here. Yeah, it's, it's a big decision he's made here to bring in, to bring in a, uh, to bring in obviously Brendan McCullum. You know, it, but I do think the three of them are very no nonsense, straight talking, and it's a fresh approach to English Test cricket because obviously it's at the one of the worst points been for a long time. Uh, obviously, this this approach now of attacking brand new cricket that McCullum will implement, I don't think he's going to come so much from a, a tactical, strategic standpoint. So obviously, he knows the game intimately, but I think he's going to be there more for his his leadership qualities, the the vast change they're going to bring to the environment. I think because you know when when uh, it was Mike Kesson, wasn't it, who um, deposed the Ross Taylor. Of the 2012 series, the 2013 what happened, didn't it? I remember he captained the Sri Lanka the 2012 series. He won, they drew one all, uh, and then Ross Taylor thought they did a good job actually of captaining New Zealand. And then you know Hess comes in and gets rid of him. You know the darling of New Zealand cricket, and you think, well, what, what are you seeing that we're not? And then you know, Brendan McCullum comes in and does very well actually, obviously as a, as a as a Test captain, and kind of lays the path to what we're seeing today in New Zealand cricket, which ultimately is the best Test team in the world, right? Um, so. I look at it and I think, well, actually, you know what? This actually might be a really good appointment. And I think, obviously, they need someone to gel with Stokes. And obviously, the likes of, you know, Graham Ford, Gary Kirsten, these guys, you know, uh, Simon Katic, she felt, are not, are not really the ones uh, to, to work with them, you know, perfectly well and, you know, um, readjust the, the, the state of English cricket. And I think they feel like with a the, with the trio of Stokes and McCullum, that can very much, they, they're, they're the two peas in the pod, aren't they? So they can work together very well and implement the strategies you want to go forward and the changing culture and a winning mentality, attacking mentality. Because the thing that attacking cricket, the problem is, I mean, I don't necessarily think, I initially was thinking, well, what are you going to do is bring in a bunch of T20 players. Do you know what I mean? Bring in Livingston in to bat at five. I mean, it's not about that, it's just about the, the mentality, I think. I think that's what's going to be that McCullum will bring to the dressing room. And I think. That's where they maybe got this one right, uh, because it is against the grain. It's not what we thought. We, I, I, I like Gary Kirsten to be honest with you. I saw Gary Kirsten interviews on Top Sport, and I really like the fact he was saying like, you know, I'd want the, the best guys who know county cricket in the room. I'd want us to cook and these guys to be in a room and talk about say county cricket. But I think we will go down the same way as maybe you know yesteryear, you know, days gone by, and the performances will they would they be similar? And I, and I and I think maybe that's why they've gone down this other route. It's a complete change. And I think they've realised that the qualities there and these players, like people keep failing, you know, Lawrence and Pope and Sibley and Burns. These guys, these guys, these guys are quality players and shown it in fits and spurts. But what's the reason? Why have they not performed? Now, obviously, COVID has been obviously a part of that. It's obviously very mentally taxing and draining. sort of Ben Stokes himself. But that being said... They've still shown glimpses of, of, of high quality performances. So you think, like, is it really the, the, the technique and, and the tactics that need to, need to change? Um, or is it, you know, is, um, 
is it down to or it's just a technique really in, in their cases or is it and their innate ability or is it more about the approach to the game and the mentality that's what i think that mccullum is gonna is gonna um it's an implement. So I think they feel that they've got enough. They've got enough quality there in county cricket. You know, we're probably going to see the likes of Harry Brook, Josh Bahana make debuts. Um, you know, the summer. Um, well, they're going to see. But I think the the way they'll feel about being in the dressing room, up going onto that pitch, representing England, will be different to maybe in in a few years gone by. I do feel like the, if you look at compares, you know, Key, McCullum and Stokes, compared with. Giles, Silverwood and Root. I think the stark contrast and the, the, the men that we're dealing with here, the, the mentality, um, I, I think there's a, there's, it, it makes you much more confident saying the latter three names. Um, or should I should say the former three names. No, I just said uh, the new guys first. Um, I, I think when McCollum, Stokes and Key, you've got guys that are just basically no BS and they want to make things better for English cricket and they and they will do that at any cost and they're and they're gonna be a different approach, you know, and I think the reality is I think maybe we personally thought I because I feel he was a close second that guy and I think they maybe thought well it could be just, you know much, you know just much of a muchness really. That being said I think he could have done a similar job to Andy Flower, whether they think that's situation or maybe feel like Kirsten can gel with Stokes. Maybe Kirsten gel with Key in the interviews, who knows? Um what I do know is that He's an excellent coach, and we might regret this. Who knows? Could we say in a year's time it didn't work out? But I think McCombs got a four-year contract. He's there for a long haul, and I think it's it, it is actually a good appointment. I actually think it's a good appointment um, because he, let's, I, I know obviously he's knows in the coach arena for his white ball credentials. That being said, um, I said he, he led that, that led that Test team after Australia because a lot of flack was on Hessen, and I think people initially were like not for some reason, which including me, were like. Discredited McCullum and, and hated on McCullum a little bit, which is unfair because it wasn't his fault. He made, he made the decision. Although apparently there's a few whispers in the background. So yes, McCullum. But anyway, um, we'll leave it there for that one. But you know, Ross Taylor, I thought they did well. But you know, then but McCullum came in did really well. And you can't fault him. So I feel like this it actually is a, is a is a good appointment. I think he could do something similar with the with the Test team and get them to perform and you know and believe in their ability more than maybe that was coming across from Silverwood and. The pally pally side of things. I don't think that's going to be the case with Stokes. And I mean, look at Stokes. He wants Brody and Jimmy back. He's like, they're back. A lot of said last time he captained Brendan Stokes since I brought on the side, did he, in 2020 against the Pakistan or all the West Indies? He didn't have him in the side, did he? Um, so, it's not like you've not dropped Broad before. Um, but because like, he knows he can control them, he can handle them. I don't I don't think Broad and Alice are going to give Stokes any kind of crap, to be honest. I really don't see it. I think they're going to be. I think it's going to be they're going to respect him because how can you not? But how you, I think Joe Root, how can you not respect Joe Root? It's just that Joe Root's different kind of character, innately different character, and I think they realise that you know the side these guys need a much more of a stern leadership. So, so yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. That's my kind of thoughts on the whole thing. I think it's going to point me. I think the trio uh, it, it is a breath of fresh air. I, I've always liked Rob Key. I've always I've listened to you know I mean, Sky Sports for years, and I've always enjoyed him his banter with him and Hussein but now we guess he gets to, to show what he's really about on this side of the fence so yeah anyway I'll leave it there guys uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the content please do like comment subscribe and hopefully yeah I'll catch you on the next one